In this video, we learn how to differentiate the MRI sequences of brain T1, T2, and flare. Basically, we'll know what is the terminology used in MRI reports. So, if it is high signal intensity, it is called hyper intense. That is, it's brighter than the structure which we are comparing it to. So, it is high signal intensity or hyper intense compared to whatever you're comparing to. Next is intermediate signal or ISO intense. Again, ISO intense to the thing we are comparing to and low signal intensity is called hypo intensity. Again, compared to the thing we are comparing to. In brain, we generally compare the intensity with a gray matter on all sequences. How do we know this is a T1 weighted sequence? Fat appears bright on T1. Here you can see that subcutaneous fat in the skull is bright or hyper intense coming to lower sections we will see how grey matter and white matter appears so now we will trace the grey matter grey matter here is the outer cortex appearing dark grey so grey matter appears dark grey we will trace it along the cortex very well defined on T1 weighted sequence. Next, you can see beneath it there is white matter. So, white matter appears light grey in T1 weighted images. So, in layman terms, we can say that grey matter appears grey, white matter appears white. So, on T1 weighted sequence, grey matter appears grey, white matter appears white. So, this is more anatomical sequence. So, it matches with the anatomy. So this is the white matter here we are tracing appearing light grey. Next coming to the ventricles the CSF appears black on T1 weighted images. So here we can see the ventricles which are filled with CSF appearing black on T1 weighted images. Coming to T2 weighted sequence. Here we can see that fat appears intermediate. Intermediate is almost iso intense. So it is intermediate to bright. So the subcutaneous fat appearing intermittent to bright here. Coming to lower down sections where we can see grey matter and white matter clearly. So here we can see that grey matter appears light grey we'll trace the grey matter yes here we're tracing the grey matter the outer cortex is appearing light grey this is opposite to what we saw on t1 weighted sequence and white matter here white matter appears dark grey again opposite to what we saw on T1 weighted images so T1 was more anatomical T2 weighted images are opposite to T1 weighted images in this sequence now coming to CSF CSF appears white on T1 weighted sequences so wherever CSF is there that is ventricles here we can see ventricles appearing bright also the extra axial CSF spaces the subarachnoid space wherever the CSF goes is bright on T2 weighted sequence any pathologies which has water in it that is edema looks well on T2 weighted sequence coming to flare on flare again the fat appears intermediate to dark here we can see fat appearing intermediate to dark going to the lower down sections of a flare sequence a flare means fluid attenuated inversion recovery sequence again we saw the fat appearing intermediate to black going to lower down sections we can see ventricles coming up at this section we stop to see the gray and white matter here we can see the grey matter appearing light grey again and we are tracing it 
so this is the gray matter appearing light gray after which the white matter we come to white matter this appears dark gray so this is similar to t2 flare sequence is similar to t2 weighted sequence except the fluid signal is attenuated okay this is the caudate nucleus nothing but deep gray matter structures so it's similar to gray matter here is the basal ganglia that was the caudate nucleus they're similar to gray matter that is light gray and here in between we can see a white matter structure that is internal capsule so internal capsule is white matter hence it appears dark gray at last coming to csf so here as i told csf signal is suppressed so ventricles contain csf csf appears black on flare extra axial csf spaces here you can see sylvian fissure filled with fluid that is csf appearing black summarize flare is similar to t2 sequence except the csf is black so all pathologies on flare sequence are very well visualized briefly comparing all sequences on t1 sequence gray matter is dark white matter is light so we we can say that gray matter is gray white matter is white so gray for gray white for white this is the most anatomical sequence that's why t1 sequences are used to visualize anatomy and csf is dark on t1 on t2 gray matter is light gray white matter is dark gray this is opposite to what we saw on t1 weighted sequence csf is white on flare gray matter is light gray white matter is dark gray this is similar to t2 weighted sequence except the csf is dark in flare this is fluid inversion recovery sequence md and dnb radiology students if you get a mri case in exam they'll definitely ask this basic physics you have to know repetition time and time to echo these are the two factors which we set for any sequence so in t1 weighted images tr is less than 800 te is less than 30 both measured in milliseconds again on t2 weighted images tr is more than 2000 te more than 80 on flare tr is more than 3000 and te more than 80 so on t1 weighted images there is short tr short te on t2 weighted images long tr long te and on flare it is very long tr and long te you have to remember this for the exams just some easy mnemonic to remember the sequences how structure appear in each world war 2 is a mnemonic so water white t2 water appears white on t2 weighted images so in flare csf is dark white matter is dark and fat is intermediate to dark so remember all dark is flare world war 2 for t2 water white t2 sequence and the other one flare like share and subscribe for more such videos follow our page radiology doodles